What's up YouTube, it's No More Op4 here. Today bringing you something a little bit different again in this uh, recent series of do-it-yourself videos. But I'm going to show you how to build your own reactive or resetting target, uh, steel target, uh, in this video. Uh, in the first part I'm going to go over the construction on how to actually build the target, what you need to build it, um, and some pointers on what features and what designs are more beneficial in my opinion um, than doing it some other ways so that'll be the first part and then I'll roll in some video uh, the major second part is going to be just a little bit about um, the safety on shooting steel a little bit of the science behind the ballistics you know I'm not going to get too into detail I'm no scientist um, I'm just going to kind of broad stroke it here the main reason I want to do that is just because a lot of people don't know a lot about shooting in steel and if you're just getting it into just getting into it like I recently was um, there's a lot of information to process and there aren't a lot of good places online to find that information so I just wanted to kinda of broad stroke it for you give you the basics so you know what to do what not to do in your own setup uh, I will annotate what part that starts at so if you don't care to watch that part you don't have to the beginning part will be the construction and then me actually shooting the target Okay, so the first thing we're going to cover is the required materials you need to actually build your target. Um, first thing you're going to need to get is an old lawnmower tire or wheelbarrow tire. Uh, really doesn't matter the size so long as it's big enough for a 2x4 uh, to brace against. You're also going to need two bungee cords, a steel target which we're going to talk a little bit more in detail further along, and then you're going to need some wood. Uh, now let's get into the specifics on the pieces of wood because that is going to vary a little bit between you know different sizes that you're going to make so let's get into that. So to build the target itself you're actually going to need about 8 foot in 2x4s then you're going to need in this example about mm, 4 feet of uh, planks uh, this is I believe 1 by 5 and a quarter uh, you could use 2x6 if you want. Uh, not really going to make a difference there. That's really just for stability to make sure the target is on a flat surface. Uh, and then you're also going to need a little bit smaller boards in this design. Um, they could have been 2x4s, doesn't really matter. Uh, but what you're going to do is, you're going to take, as I did here, I took two 2x4s, two 24 inches in length, and then 14 inches wide is what I did across and I cut those pieces out and I strengthened them by putting as you can see here a piece along the side of it as well as along the top of it just for added security I did the same thing on the back added strength I should say um, and then I ran these two planks on the top so that the 2x4 arm stays in the same position uh, on the bottom again I said I did put two boards down screwed up into the 2x4s that were sitting on top of those and then I drilled holes into the planks and I insert a steel rod down into the ground for added stability. That's what you're going to need as far as the wood goes. Now I did just mention these steel stakes. Let me get one of those for you. I've got four of these. I can get these at your local hardware shop these aren't anything special and then I just got a little washer on there and got some epoxy and glued the washer on uh, you don't really need to use the washer it just makes it a little bit easier for when you're taking the stakes back out the other piece you're going to need is a steel uh, threaded rod uh, this one here is a uh, half inch thick I really don't recommend going any thinner than that and what I did was I drilled through the 2x4s uh, on each side I did it here on this side as well and then I also drilled into the bottom of the arm 2x4 so that it can move um, you can see in there I put uh, lock washers on um, on the inside I just put um, two nuts on there and then a washer against so it's really simple it's really not that difficult to take this apart as we'll get into, um, the arm can get damaged 
Obviously, that's part of the reason that this target is as inexpensive as it is. It's very easy to swap out parts, but that's all you're going to need um, down there for the actual arm assembly. And then up here to connect the bungee cords, um, just a simple screw with another washer. The piece of steel that I used for this target is AR500 steel. Uh, it is 3 eighths inches thick and you can see it has a mounting bracket on the back of it so that it is designed to actually fit right onto a 2x4. Now this steel target itself is made by qualitytargets.com. I'll annotate that in for you. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the steel later but I just wanted to show you the piece so you understand how it mounts onto here. So that's all that you need to actually create the target. Now what we're going to look into is the specifics on why the target is designed the way it is. Um, again, this is just a prototype. In the future, I am going to make some changes when I make another one of these. But this target formed, performed flawlessly for me today. Um, didn't have anything wrong, didn't have to change anything at the actual range. Uh, and the great thing about this target is it costs less than $20 to get all the materials for this entire target, excluding the steel itself. Uh, we will, again, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but $20 for a resetting target, excluding the steel, is awesome. Um, including the steel online, you're not going to find a target for less than $100. I'd be surprised if you can find a decent one for under $200, maybe $180, something like that. I've seen some, but. Um, $20 plus the you know X amount for the steel depending on what kind of plate you use that one costs $60 shipped so for $60 plus the 20 that it cost me actually a little bit less than 20 uh, under $80 you effectively have yourself a reactive resetting steel target um, another cool thing about this it's lightweight it's not big and bulky like a lot of the other steel targets on the market are um, any of the parts are very easy to replace and don't require you to send them back to the manufacturer or anything like that. This can all be done yourself. The other cool part is, I don't know if I said lightweight, but it stores very easily. All you have to do is remove those bungee cords and the arm will rest down so it is very easy to store. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the dynamic of the dynamics of why I actually designed the target the way I did. So the first part in the design uh, that I wanted to talk about was making sure that the target arm is angled slightly forward as you can see here. Uh, the reason you want to do that is to uh, deflect any fragments from the impact of the bullet down away from you and into the ground. Uh, we'll get a little bit more in detail when I, when I go into talking about the, um, you know, the, the physics behind the impact. Um, but uh, once you have the angle, you're, you're pretty much good. Now, you don't want it to be too extreme that the target face is significantly lessened. Uh, just enough so that you've got a bit of a downward angle, maybe 20 to 30 degrees. Um, you also want to be careful that when you cut the 2x4, it can clear underneath. You did see that I had it kind of angled a little bit. So just so when the, the arm actually moves back, it doesn't break up into here and uh, you know it, it won't stop its movement so once you have that set up you can attach the bungee to the uh, to the arm um, now what the bungee serves to do obviously and this is you know this is gonna make a little bit of noise because I don't have it staked in and, and the washer is not all the way down because uh, I had loosened this but basically when the bullet hits the target obviously the arm is going to go backwards and the bungees will serve to bring it back to forward. I'm going to let it come back a little bit. So, you know, when you're shooting smaller arms, handguns, uh, the, as you'll see in the videos, the target does not move that far back, but um, if you didn't have the bungees on there, the target would just stay back. So, they are a necessary part. And then additionally, on top of that, what I did was I got the uh, tractor tire that I had talked about and I drilled two little bolts um, into the, or excuse me, two little screws 
into the tire there and I put a washer on with a nut and then I drilled two holes into the planks that I have on here so that the tire sits very nicely onto the target. Now what this does serves a couple purposes actually. It minimizes the stress that the bungees are going to have to go through because it will stop the arm. Uh, also if the bungees fail and in this design um, some of the fragmentation did hit the bungees and did cut the cord a little bit. Uh, it's something I'm going to have to work on in the future but let's say you are shooting and, and let's say some fragmentation did destroy one or both of those bungees um, the tire will stop the target arm from falling completely down possibly damaging the entire target or the target face of the steel itself so that's what that serves for um, we did talk about the uh, threaded rod a little bit again that's an important part and I really don't recommend going any smaller than a half inch um, because that does go under some stress obviously from that movement because it's a quick jerking action so you do want a strong rod uh, for that and that's actually where a quarter of the cost come from the rod was was like six dollars of the twenty it cost me to build this so it's definitely one of the areas you don't want to skimp on so you can see here uh, the angle of the target face it is on flat ground right now um, you can see that the fragmentation that resulted basically went almost straight down in line with the target um, right into the the base of the target there uh, again like I said this is a prototype in a future version what I'm probably going to do is mount this so that uh, I'll probably get another 2x4 and put it basically where the target face is and have it a little bit higher up so the target sits here and then I'll take two boards uh, and to connect the 2x4s and I'll screw those in so what I'll basically do then is I'll make the angle of the face so that when it comes down it's falling and fragging in front of the actual target um, that's something I'm going to have to work on to see what the best design is. Um, the fragmentation you can see there, it's not, it's not horrible. You know, it, it's not decreasing the strength of the target, but it is chewing the wood up. Um, <clears throat> if I can come up with a design that would put it more forward, you know, all that's going to do for me is increase the life of the target, which is a good thing. The other thing is, you know, the bungee cords, unfortunately, are in the path of the fragmentation right now. Um, if I can move the design forward that's one less thing that I'll have to worry about. So I'm gonna roll in some footage of me actually shooting the targets but one thing I did want to talk about is um, the the moving arm uh, of the target. Uh, now obviously you know nobody I'm I'm not a perfect shot nobody is uh, you're gonna hit the arm it's you know it's gonna happen as you can see here it looks like I hit it twice um, it really didn't decrease the strength of the target that much but if it did again one of the good things about this target it's very easy to take the plate off and replace the 2x4 nothing on here is permanent so I can just take this 2x4 out and uh, replace it with another one it's really not that difficult you know again you know it, it getting hit is going to decrease the life of it but I shot it twice and uh, it's you know it's still in good shape here. No, no weakness is I can detect anyway. So, um, if I can perfect the design uh, so that the target is is closer, uh, is, or I should say is farther away, so that the fragmentation is deflected down in front of the target base. Uh, if I can perfect that, then really the only weak point that I'll ever have to change out will be this arm if it gets shot. Uh, unless some idiot accidentally shoots the target base, but fortunately for me, my friends are, for the most part, pretty good shots. So hopefully that doesn't happen, but this is really the only part of the target that you have to seriously worry about it getting damaged by accidentally shooting it. Uh, one other thing to mention if, if you do decide to build your own target is that you want to keep steel away from... You know, when I say steel, I mean other screws or bolts or things like that. 
you want to keep those away from where you're aiming at. Um, the only thing on this design that is close to that, let me uh, move the camera here for you, is where the bungee cord connects to the back of the arm. Now it's a short screw, it's really not that long, so a bullet would have to go all the way through, which it definitely will on a 2x4, even a 9mm will go straight through, as you can see it did on this one. Um, but the size of the screw that I have there is not going to cause the bullet to come all the way back out of the wood and hit you. So uh, a 9mm versus that little screw, I'm, I'm betting on the 9mm winning every time. So the point is that you don't want to have any excess metal or anything on here that could possibly deflect the bullet back to you. Okay, so in this part of the video, I wanted to discuss uh, just some things to keep in mind about when designing your own steel target, um, because there are some safety issues with, sh with shooting steel. Uh, you need to consult the manufacturer of the steel that you're going to be shooting at if you have specific questions as far as what it can take. Uh, but I'm just going to kind of broad stroke some main ideas about what happens when you shoot at steel. Uh, so that you can be a little bit more prepared and make an educated decision uh, if you do decide to build your own target. Okay, so the first thing to consider when you're shooting at a steel target is what kind of steel are you shooting at? This is AR500 steel right here, uh, again made by QualityTargets.com. Uh, they're a real good site, I'll annotate the link in for you, real good company I should say, um, but they make good products. They don't have a flashy website or anything like that, but their products are good and that's what I'm all about. Uh, right here, made in the United States. I talked to, I believe Calvin was the name of the guy I spoke with. Um, he was very cool, talked to me about the type of steel that they use, um, what it can stand, what good shooting distances are. Uh, so they definitely got my seal of approval. I recommend that to you guys. If you have any interest in building your own steel target, I highly recommend that you check them out. This target was under their steel challenge section. Um, getting back to the actual quality of the steel though, this is AR500 steel. It's a really hard steel. Um, there are really only two factors that, that go into the hardness of the steel and it has to do with the amount of carbon and other alloying elements that they use when they, when they create its chemical composition. Uh, the other manner just has to do with how the heating and the cooling of the steel is done. Um, and that's, you know, that's really fundamental basics of, of the finished steel with a hole is, is how, you know, how they do it at the beginning is really what's going to make the big difference. There's nothing that you can do after the steel is already made to, to make it stronger, basically. Um, other thing you want to, you, you know, you want to think about here is basically that the hardness of the steel is what's going to keep you safe. Um, the weaker of a steel that you use, the easier it is going to be for this face to be damaged. We'll talk about this in a second, but when you damage steel and create a pit or a divot in here, it basically changes the way that the bullet is going to react when it hits the steel face, making it more dangerous so that it could come back and hit you. 
obviously that's not what we want to happen. So um, when a basically when a uh, a bullet or any kind of projectile hits a face that is let's just say 90 degrees, um, so long as this surface is flat, it can really only go 20 degrees. You know, it's not going to go back 90 degrees. Um, this this is just information I found online based on my research that I did. I'm no expert in ballistics or anything like that, but um, hard steel with a, a smooth surface, you're basing, basically looking at a 20 degree angle for any splashback. So I did talk about the reason that the steel face is important, uh, the smooth face I should say is important, is because if you hit a divot or a you know a pit anywhere on the target the trajectory of this splashback is going to be unpredictable so it's important to make sure that the target you know check it every couple of times you're shooting at it just to be sure you know if you're in between runs whatever it may be check the target to make sure that it hasn't uh, it hasn't sustained any damage um, because if a bullet does hit and damage the target and cause a divot or a dent that dent is going to make the target unsafe to shoot at. So the next thing I wanted to speak on, um, and I did kind of mention this, that, mention this in the design um, and construction of the target, is not to have any exposed steel near the face or metal parts, I should say, exposed metal parts um, holding it up or holding it in place because you know, if you've got a nut or a bolt or something that's exposed and a bullet hits that, the trajectory of any fragmentation that is caused by hitting that is going to come back at, you know, you, you really don't know what kind of trajectory that's going to take. So that's dangerous and you want to try to avoid that. Uh, the next part of the design that's critical, like I talked about, is angling the target slightly forward. When you angle a target slightly forward, when the bullet hits the target face, you're dissipating more of the bullet's energy down into the ground instead of possibly out back at you. So that's very important. Um, the next thing that's important and why this, this design, in, in my opinion, is uh, advantageous is because this is reactive. When you shoot a static target, and, and what I mean by that is a target that when hit does not move at all. So let's say, for example, I just took a 2x4 and, you know, buried it into the ground with an exposed part so I can mount the target on it. If I just hit that, when the bullet hits the target face, a lot more of the energy is going to splash back because the target doesn't give it all. With a reactive target like this and with a downward angle, when the, the bullet hits the target, a lot more energy is dissipated into that backwards motion and the fragmentation goes down so it's the best of both worlds. The other beneficial part of having um, the target angled and reactive is the fact that when the bullet hits the target, um, let's say again in the example of a stationary or a static target as I called it, and a 2x4 placed into the ground, when a bullet hits a static target like that, all of the bullet's energy is uh, it's basically directed into a single point on the target's face and it, and it weakens the target in that place. Um, you can see here there you know there are paint chips obviously because the paint that was sprayed on the front of the target chipped off but nowhere on here is there a divot from a bullet hitting that's because of the fact that when it's hit <clears throat> a lot of the energy is dissipated downwards and a lot of it is dissipated back so it's not weakening the points of the steel the last thing I wanted to talk about in regard to the steel and shooting steel in general um, first has to do with uh, what kind of caliber you're going to be using. When I first shot this today, I shot a sintered, uh, sinter ammo, um, which is basically instead of a, using a full metal jacket, it's powdered copper that's sprayed on the bullet instead of the full metal jacket. So basically when it hits the target, the, uh, the powdered copper basically just vaporizes. So there's not fragmentation like you would have with a full metal jacket. You have to know what kind of steel you're working with. Again, I recommend using at least AR500 steel, which is one of the strongest ones you can get. Um, but you need to know what you're shooting with and what the manufacturer recommends. 
Uh, I don't recommend shooting a pistol within 10, any closer than 10 yards. Um, I did check the area in front of the target and I did not find any splash back in front of the target closer than within a few inches from the base. So I really didn't see anything, but that's not to say that it couldn't happen. Uh, after I shot the centered ammo, I did shoot full metal jackets and they worked just as fine. Obviously they did exert a little bit more force onto the target. Um, the other thing to, that you wanna, you wanna be careful of it is if you're gonna shoot rifle or things like that, you need to have the right range. Um, because the, the steel, you know, it is a stronger steel, but if you shoot a rifle round closer than 100 yards, you're going to damage the steel a lot faster, and that's what's going to cause a, an issue about the pitting or, you know, the divots like we talked about. Um, so that if you, you know, nothing may happen when you hit it and actually divot it, but if you hit that divot again, maybe down the road, maybe the same day, the trajectory of that bullet is going to be a lot more unpredictable and a lot more dangerous. Um, also, when you're shooting frangible ammo or, or the centered ammo like I talked about, um, it's, it's lighter than regular lead ammunition, but the thing you have to remember is when you're shooting a lighter bullet that means that there's going to be greater speed and that causes more heat and heat is actually one of the major factors on what the damage is is done to the steel when when the bullet hits it the, the heat of the the round uh, and the heat that is given off when that target or when that target is hit by the bullet um, can mean greater damage. So just because you're shooting center fire doesn't mean that, and I don't mean to say center fire, it's centered ammo. Uh, when you shoot that, you know, don't think that you're gonna be safe just because you're shooting that because you could still be damaging the target. So you do still need to make sure um, that you're within the correct ranges. This is No More Op 4 again, guys. I hope this video helped. I hope you can make your own steel target and uh, hopefully it'll work just as well as this one has for me. Again, under $80 for the complete part, the target base itself under 20 bucks. Uh, if you have any questions with specs or anything like that, shoot me a PM, uh, do a comment on the video. I try to get back to you as soon as I can. Um, I appreciate all the support. I appreciate video likes. Uh, subscriptions obviously keep me going. This is No More Op 4. I'm out of here, guys.